you know that I, I i just thought i'll just start the website and um i'll just talk about images or talk about uh Leica or photography just my own opinions really and just put images up there for people to have a look at and, and see what they and see what they thought This is Peter Zellums, Greeny Flicks Adventure 8, and welcome to another video. All right, yeah, I've got a special guest today, and Adam from Adam Insights, talking to me on Zoom. He's a photographer. He reached out to me. He's a subscriber and a viewer of Greeny Flicks Adventure 8, and his expertise uh, is street photography, as well as a background in marketing and um, technology. Uh, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to interview Adam, uh, get to find out a bit more about his photographic bent, his interests, and uh, also a bit more about the marketing side. And uh, like we all need to do, have a side hustle, make some money along the way to support our passion, photography. And uh, we can learn a lot from Adam, I think. Technology, it works. Hey, good afternoon, Peter. And welcome. Really, for me, I'm just a really passionate uh like a user uh really the the camera that's with me all the time is uh the mp film oh, um, this one i've had i think now for six years uh and it just sort of lives in a bag with me quite a lot of the time and um it's just nice to actually take some film shots uh, with it every now and again and then check out what I've got on, you know, because um, you often forget what you've taken photos with the film. Uh, actually, that particular image was uh, one shot on the M240 uh, some, year, some years ago now. Uh, that one, yeah, and that one's also in the file, in the files I sent you. Yeah, thank you very much. I, was, I had a look at the photographs. Very good, of course. Uh, great composition, great uh, imagination and everything. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, I just enjoy the mechanics of uh, the rangefinder camera. And the thing with me is that once I get started, I can't really stop. So it was like once I uh, originally uh, got into Leica with the 240, um, I then had the opportunity to move to a 240 safari with a 35 millimeter summicron and then that sort of grew and developed and so then i ended up moving to the m10 and uh, from there i ended up acquiring things like the 35 millimeter summer Lux and the 50 summer Lux and uh more recently the 28 summer Lux and um also uh, the m11 my Day job is uh, I'm a marketing uh, manager, but uh, I've got a real passion just for taking photos wherever I can. So I'm a very keen cyclist. I like to get out and about as often as I can. And uh, all the time, uh, my Leica MP film body is uh, generally in the bag with me, uh, normally with a 28 millimeter, just because that's... Uh, the length that I like to shoot all the time. And uh, I, what I probably really like about shooting uh, with film when I get out and about is, firstly, I tend to forget what I've taken photos of. And so I really enjoy actually just uh, remembering what I've taken photos of when I uh, develop or uh, send it off to the lab and then uh, get the scans back. Or uh, I, I tend to like learning about what uh, the different types of film uh, look like, uh, because all, all of uh, all the different films, be it say uh, Fuji C two hundred, Kodak uh, Portra, Kodak Pro, uh, any of the Alfords, they've all got a bit of a different final look to them, and they all behave in different ways. And once you've sort of figured out uh, how different films uh, respond in different conditions. You sort of visualize your pit. You get to visualize your picture around around that, and that's one of the reasons why. I, they're probably the reasons I really like shooting film. How were you introduced to Leica? Actually, because I got really annoyed with uh, Canon, Nikon, and Sony. Um, in so I've always been 
enjoying taking photographs with uh, DSLRs that let me shoot manual because I always enjoy shooting manual uh, 100%. But around about 2015, 2016, I built up a bit of a collection of uh, both Canon and Nikon equipment. And uh, that was really when mirrorless uh, was starting to replace DSLRs. And I sort of saw the writing on the wall that eventually um, my collection of EF lenses and my collection of uh, Nikon AF lenses were just not going to work on future bodies. Yeah. And I actually felt quite betrayed by Canon Nikon uh for that because i realized well i've invested all of this money in uh, lenses which i was hoping was just going to last for life and i could uh, then just upgrade uh, the bodies as i went as i went along uh but now you're making the lenses uh, basically redundant uh by changing uh, the system on your bodies and i realized they get they're just going to do that again and again and so i decided to try and just uh, I decided just to bite the bullet and uh, invest in Leica, who has never changed their lens mount since the 50s and have definitely got no intention of changing the M lens mount because, hey, you can go off and you can buy a brand new M11 today and you can then jump onto eBay and buy a M mount lens from uh, 1955 and you can put them and you can put them together and you can take them out and enjoy them and they'll just and they'll just work yeah and at the same time in say 50 years if you've got an m11 that's still working you can uh, put whatever uh, lenses like has actually got uh onto your um, m11 uh, then in like 2070 if uh, that's what you wanted uh, to do so it was originally i I kind of looked at it and I thought, well, maybe Leica in the long term is just going to save me money because I'm never going to have to buy lenses again. Yeah. Uh, and I started off with uh, Summicron lenses, uh, thinking these were going to be good. Um, but then I ended up trying the Summer Luxes and I decided, well, now I've got to upgrade. So I did. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm actually... I'm just really thrilled with uh, what I get out of uh, the 28, 35 and 50 summer luxes because they let me do anything. They're really sharp if I stop them down to about F4, but I can uh, run them both at, uh, oh, sorry, I can run them all at uh, F1.4 and I can just take them out in low light. I can take them out uh, just through the city at night and uh, I can just take, uh, photos uh, just off of uh, the street light at say 100 or 200 ISO and have really well lit uh, photographs that are so clean, so colorful, so well detailed and I'm shooting at uh, very reasonable uh, shutter speeds as well. Um, I originally got the M240 and then moved over to the MP240 uh, because I actually really liked uh, the look of the Safari Green limited edition kit that was uh, out at the time. Yep. Uh, so I just you buy new, I, new or second hand? I got it new, and um, it just goes to show the way that the pricing for Leica increases because I bought it brand new in November 2015 for uh, 12 triple nine. That was the M240 kit with a 35 millimeter uh, Summicron. Yep. Uh, now you can't even you can't even get a brand new Leica M11 for less than fifteen thousand. Towards the end of 2016, I was looking at getting a monochrome. I was really keen on uh, getting a uh, monochrome for some black and white stuff. And I went into Photoco in uh, Adelaide, uh, who are my uh, go-to dealer now. And I was going to ask about the monochrome, but then I saw they had um, a uh, MP uh, film body. Uh, on the shelf and I thought that's interesting and uh, once I picked it up and I just tried out the mechanics of it uh, I just fell in love with it straight away and I justified it really because I thought well I could actually it was cheaper than the monochrome and I could just start I could buy a whole stack of black and white film because I was thinking I'll only ever uh, shoot black and white with this thing yeah. and I'll develop it myself which I now do uh, but I've started to shoot a lot more color in it as well. 
And it's just really enjoyable because particularly shooting black and white Ilford or Kodak film, at home, I can play around with the development time. So, uh, you know, stuff Photoshop and Lightroom, they're all great for digital, but for developing your own black and white stuff, if I want a bit more contrast in the image, I just leave it in uh, the development tank for an extra couple of minutes. Or if I want to um, have the shadow, keep the shadows open, I just uh, take it out of the development tank a little bit earlier, um, or I agitate the film a bit more. I play around with the temperatures. You know, that's like the the original Photoshop, and that's actually uh, a yeah. lot of fun to do. And you do your own printing as well. I do, yeah. One of the best things for me with photography is actually holding a print in my hands. Uh, because I guess it, it's one thing to say buy a brand new high res uh, body and put a really super sharp uh, lens on it and then go pixel peeping in Photoshop and think, wow, this is amazing. But I think when people do that, because they, it just gets really boring. And then the image just gets saved away on a hard drive and no one really gets to enjoy it. For me, I just, um, I found that the best investment I had was a photo printer because I just get a real joy out of seeing a print coming out of that and then looking at the physical print on paper, uh, be it canvas or um, uh, just artboard or, or gloss paper. It, I just get that, I just really like having that tangible print in my hands afterwards have you ever done uh developing film well actually printing with an enlarger and then doing paper printing film developing with acid bars well you know the appropriate chemical bar. unfortunately unfortunately not um i i would like to uh but uh i, I would have i would actually have to build a dark room for all of that at home Yes, I think yeah. the first time I did that myself, we used the bathroom in the house and then basically covered up the gaps underneath the doors and whatever, and then had a, a electric bar heater, yeah, uh, which was basically heating up the room, <laughs> offered infrared lights so that wouldn't affect uh, <laughs> the uh, the printing process and the enlarging process. Okay. Yes, oh, no, it's something I'd want to do definitely. I agree. Uh, with digital photography, it all ends up in the ether somewhere on your computer and hard drives and and um, SD cards and whatever. And yeah. uh, to print something out and have it in your hand is really something special. Yeah, and I think it's really it's why I started the website as well because I realised I just had so many images uh, in Lightroom Light. My Lightroom library has got about 50,000 images in it now. And I've just had, I've got so many images sitting in there, which uh, it's only me that really gets to look at them or uh, friends and family, if I sort of force it, force them to look at them. <laughs> and, you know, that I, I, I just thought I'll just start the website and um, I'll just talk about images or talk about, uh, Leica or photography, just my own opinions, really, and just put images up there for people to have a look at and, and see what they and see what they thought. And it's really just grown from there. And I mean, I, I get I get plenty of comments either on videos or on the website um, telling me images are technically incorrect or or, or all of those uh, uh, sort of fantastic internet photographers that like to comment all of that stuff. But then I get some people say, hey, I really like looking at this. This is nice. Um, and, yeah, sometimes people say, oh, that's a really nice image. We'd love that on the wall. I'm I'm happy just to send them the high-res image and say, here you go, print it, enjoy it. Mm. Are you able to share your, maybe go onto your website and share your screen? Absolutely. And then that way um, we can go through your website and you can talk about it and, and how you've set it up. The website really just started as a bit of a hobby for me and just a place to share images. Um, it's really oh, at work, I'm often uh, building websites anyway. But uh, well, this is it, adaminsights.com. Uh, uh, there's a few there's a few areas to it, so I just like to share uh, some photos uh, wherever I can. 
course, it likes to be a bit slow while we're while we're screen sharing. Yep. It's always the way. Oh, I see. That's where the advertising comes in. Is, mm. is where Google can advertise in numerous locations. Yeah. So on the on the blog itself, I've just got a, a few line lines of code from Google, uh, which allow them to display ads um, uh, to users through the site. And so that's that's really where the site just returns a little bit of uh, pocket money back to me, which um, uh, actually then just finds its way back into Leica's bank account. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not uh, affiliated, obviously, with Leica in any way. I just um, uh, I just enjoy their gear, and uh, I share my commentary about some of their equipment on uh the, on the website as well uh or sometimes uh provide a few predictions about what some of their future uh, pieces of equipment might be um this is uh so i've, I've got a few different sides to the site i've got uh, one uh, side which is all about uh, just sharing some photos so this was one which i just saw this image coming because i was wondering you know what the story was uh, with these guys uh, here just walking through and it's just for me it's it's just a nice image um which uh, I, I just i just enjoy looking at and there's a there's a few others uh, here as well um and uh, sometimes i share an image which i've shot on film uh, so so the structure of the site, you 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 group your photos according to the event that you have, mm. but then you also write about that as well. So you give some some insight into what yeah. happened that day or whatever. Yeah, or I talk about just how I managed to get the image uh, together. So this one here um, was actually one of my first. Uh, experiences with a very uh well with a neutral density uh filter and i was just playing around with that when i was on holiday in uh, kuala lumpur at one stage yeah the, the other things which i end up doing on uh, the website is just talking uh well testing out um some new gear um i also do a little bit of a write-up about uh, any uh like news um or any uh interesting things which i've found so um, I was uh, in a antique store some years ago, and I saw uh, this little guy sitting on a shelf. Very nice. Uh, which, <laughs> yeah, it was a like a one, a like a one B, um, and uh, I I couldn't leave it in the store, so I had to give it a try, uh, and um, I grabbed it. I put uh, a roll of uh, Kodak Portra film through it. I got a couple of images uh, from it, but it definitely needed a little bit of work to um, produce uh, some, uh, to really produce uh, some images because I think the shutter speed was, uh, the shutter speeds are, were very much out on it. Yeah. And then after I had it for uh, about six months, I uh, I sold it on to uh, someone else who was keen on restoring it and uh, and trying it. But it was just quite a lot of fun to uh, take out a hundred year old camera one day and give it a go and give it a go yeah that's incredible i mean i, I only ever review the, the only reviews that i post on the website are things that i've actually bought myself sometimes i'll uh, provide my own commentary about um, a new product which i've seen which i, I might not end up uh, buying anyway so that's things like um uh the bathing ape uh deluxe uh, seven or uh, the newer q2 uh, dawn um other times i'll provide a few tests and uh, some download images uh, of uh, the uh, from some of the new gear so i was actually really fortunate to get a hold of the Leica m11 a few days after it came out which was great yep. and then uh i've just put up a few samples of uh, the different uh, isos uh, which all Everyone always wants uh, to see straight away. And other times I'll uh, sort of provide a little bit of a prediction uh, for what I hope the future might bring. So 
I mean, I've got this latest article here about the M, well, whatever might replace the M11. <laughs> the M12. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got a few comments on there about, and uh, I actually hope Leica reads it because there's a few things in there which, um, there's a few improvements I want to see uh, Leica make on the M11 uh, into uh, whatever ends up replacing it at some stage. Where do you want your website to go? What do, what, what do you see the future for your website? Oh, to be honest, I, I just want people to enjoy it. Uh, I can be quite opinionated on there. And I sort of welcome it when uh, people come back with a different opinion. Uh, as long as it's polite, I uh, generally publish that different opinion uh, on there. And I, I just really want people to enjoy looking at the images um it would be nice if it does reach uh, the point that it can completely fund my addiction to Leica equipment but it's not it's not quite there yet it does get quite a lot of traffic but uh not, it's not uh it's not quite up there uh yet as far as um just the the uh ad revenue goes yeah now um do you, do you have your YouTube channel as well, in addition to your website? I do. Um, so if we go, so the YouTube channel is mainly Leica, um, but I've got a few other I've got a few other things on there as well. Um, and as I say, sometimes I can be a little bit opinionated on there, but uh, and. Other times I've uh, just got a few travel videos uh, on there. Some of the other things which I really enjoy uh, doing, though, is uh, the film reviews. So uh, I've got a clip here all about uh, the Ilford uh, Pan F uh, film review. Yeah, so do you see um, your YouTube channel sort of the focus to grow that or or the website, or doing both at the same time? One complements the other? I think they both complement the other. I really just let it all happen organically. And if people want to uh, just in enjoy looking at uh, the images in a video and then share an image or something like that, then I say, yeah, uh, in enjoy it. And, uh, and, that and that's fine. Yeah, you know, I've had some videos which are total flops. Like uh, I tried uh, talking a little bit about some ideas with Lightroom. No one uh, was um, at all interested uh, in them. Whereas uh, sometimes uh, I put up uh, some other uh, videos um, of uh, well, some trips that I've been to uh, different places in the world, and uh, they get uh, a huge amount of views um so yeah that's that's uh that's really um what it's all about i mean one of the great things i found was uh this particular uh, video about uh printing uh suddenly took off to um uh well over a hundred thousand views which uh was really great um but I, I guess really the view count doesn't bother me so much it, if I just get some people uh, messaging sometimes and saying, oh, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was a uh, great idea. Um, then, uh, I'm, yeah, you know, that, that makes, that makes me happy. Yes. I know how you feel. Um, I have some complete flop videos as well. And, uh, occasionally there's some, uh, ones that really take off the one skill that you definitely have that I don't have is around the, the website that you've created and obviously working that, um, I think I'm probably in the same boat as you, as far as trying to develop the YouTube channel. And, um, I use like you, I use the YouTube channel as a way of, um, showcasing my work, I suppose, mm -hmm. and gives me some satisfaction and gives me some reason. Actually, I was I was thinking about that today. Um, my wife and I went for a bushwalk in the area that we're in right now, and um, just uh, and then took taking photographs, of course, you know, during the walk, whatever. And you know, the photography, besides the printing side is 
it's it's all about the experience isn't it just going out yeah. there and and taking shots and just recording things and um and it gives you it gives you a reason to get you out and about so it's, <laughs> it's like having a personal trainer your camera <laughs> i should take the opportunity to thank you for um uh the content that you're putting out i actually really enjoy it uh i uh, I generally watch uh, your new clips as they uh, come out. Uh, and um, yeah, if you need any pointers, particularly with uh, having a photo showcase site, please uh, let me know. I think you've probably sown the seed for me, and I'm going to have to do some more investigation on that. And uh, I really and thank you uh, very much for your offer. I will take you up on that for sure. All right, Adam, well, we might sort of sign off at this stage. Uh, great chatting to you. Uh, I will do my close. Uh, <laughs> like, give it a thumbs up, <laughs> subscribe, mm -hmm. press notifications. And um, by all means, go to Adam's YouTube channel. I have the links there as well. All right. I'll say cheerio. <laughs> Until next no time. <laughs> Until next time. Okay. Thanks, Adam. See you. Yeah.